We are Georgia and David. In March of 2022, we quit our jobs to travel the world full time. We are currently exploring Mexico and our goal is to visit 100 Pueblos Mexicos. Welcome to Villa Hermosa. We're going to be spending the next week in this often overlooked capital city and we're going to show you all the coolest things we saw, the best things we ate, as well as a tour of our Airbnb and if you stay tuned to the end, a detailed breakdown of all our expenses. So our first stop of the day is Parque La Venta and it was 106 pesos for both of us to get in. Uh, if you watched our Quetzalcoatlcos video, you know that we went to the actual archaeological site of La Venta. Uh, however, everything that was there was a concrete reconstruction. All the original pieces are here in this park, so we're excited to go and see them all. So these all met carvings date from 1200 to 400 BC. Uh, one of the coolest things I think about this park though is the fact, number one, that it's literally cool. It is very shaded. Um, Villarmos and Tabasco as a whole is a very, very hot state. Uh, so it's nice to have the shade. And also there are coates running all over the place. So I'm always like, oh, look, coate, coate. <laughs> uh, this park also has a zoo section. So we will check that out after we're done checking out all of the heads. Well, I definitely recommend uh, doing uh, Parque La Venta. Even the zoo part was cool. Uh, my favorite part was that we got to see a deer who had just given yeah, birth crazy. and we got to see the little baby deer try to take his first steps. What was your favorite part? Uh, I like the uh, monkeys that were running around like in the uh, open area. Yeah, they had some uh, spider monkeys. Oh, they also had the panthers and the jaguars. Uh, the panther actually made uh, some noises uh, while we were there. I didn't yeah. know that that was the noise that they made. So that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And now we're in Parque Tomas Canibal. Uh, this park is free and it runs along the river. It's actually like kind of wraps itself around the La Venta Park. So we're going to check it out.
So we walked through the park and a guy was selling paletas, so we had to get a couple. I got cocoa. And I Oreo. And they were a little expensive. They were 40 pesos each, but they're bigger than usual. Okay. And us now is Mirador de Aguilar, or the viewpoint of the eagle. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it's closed off, yeah. so we can't take all the stairs <laughs> all the way to the top to get a good view of the city. Uh, but maybe it'll be open when you visit. So the cool building behind us used to be the Museo Elevado, or the Elevated Museum. Unfortunately, it's been abandoned and now the building is kind of falling into a state of disrepair, but it really is some cool architecture. So now that we've finished up at both parks, it's time to get something to eat. And we are headed to a very highly rated restaurant nearby. It is, however, a Japanese restaurant. We will be definitely trying some of the local specialties in the area later in the week, but right now, we just want some Asian food. We just finished up our amazing Japanese lunch. The ramen was amazing, probably the best we've had outside of Japan. And uh, the pot stickers were great as well. And it was in a really small uh, little blue house. It's kind of different. Yeah, it was in a residential neighborhood. So at first we thought we'd, we'd gone somewhere wrong, but no. Uh, and it was so amazing. The broth was really thick and rich. The noodles were handmade. The char siu was great. Super recommend it if you're in the area and want some Japanese food, uh, or if you're in Mexico and you want some Japanese food. The last time we had ramen, I think, was in San Cristobal, and it wasn't as good as this one. Uh, but now we have come to the main church, which is the Catedral de Señor de Tabasco, and we're going to see if we can go inside and check it out. This week is Semana Santa, so there is a lot going on. that here in Tabasco you could find some of the best horchatas in all of Mexico and that the best ones in Villahermosa are here at uh, Horchata de la Catedral and I can confirm this is the best horchata we have had. It is thick, it is creamy, they actually blend it with ice so it is super cold and really, really delicious. Last stop of the day is the Anthropology Museum. Uh, these type of museums tend to be our favorites, so I'm excited to check it out. We enjoyed this museum. It wasn't huge, but the pieces they had on display were very high quality.
The first stop this morning was the Plaza de Armas, and our second stop is the Observatorio Astronomico Turistico. Uh, which unfortunately also appears to be closed, so we can't appreciate the view from this perspective either. But the bridge here also has a great view. Uh, our next stop was going to be check out the church that is at the Plaza de Armas. However, today is Good Friday, so I'm going to assume they're having service. We may not be able to peek in, but we'll go check out the outside at least. Our next stop was the Casa de los Asuelos, which costs 45 pesos each to get in. Uh, the museum is small, uh, but they have different tiles in every room, and it is pretty beautiful. Um, the, there was actually a girl at the door who had us do a little survey about our whole experience in all of Villa Hermosa, which I thought was neat. They're obviously trying to ramp up tourism. And this museum happens to be located in the Zona uh, Luce. Uh, which is a series of streets that are all pedestrian only and have some bars, restaurants, shops. Uh, we've checked it out a few nights right. in a row now. It's, our Airbnb is super close by. Um, and so we're going to show you around a little bit before we head on to the market. So we've arrived at the main market and we have a couple of things that we definitely want to try. One is a very thick uh, flavored tortilla and the other is pizzole, which pizzole is a drink that is made with cacao and corn, unlike pizzole, which is a soup that we tried in Guerrero. We found the pizzole. These were just uh, 15 pesos each. I got one with sugar and one without. It's a little bit bitter from the cocoa and it's a little bit thick from the corn, uh, but I like it. I think it's a good flavor. All right, try the unsweetened. This one's a lot more bitter and you taste the chocolate a lot more, but I like them. around trying to find those thick tortillas and then we saw this huge line and we realized that the line was for churros and we had to stop and get some so these are the churros worthy of a line oh wow they are super crunchy and they almost have like a airy kind of almost like the uh, coating on like fried chicken but it's very different than the other churros we've had and it's absolutely delicious
We are back at our Airbnb after wrapping up at the market and we did get those giant thick tortillas. So here, this is the ajo or the garlic version. Uh, and then this right here is the cabeza version or head meat. Um, the lady did tell me that the most popular version was the chicharron, but after waiting in that long line, she said there would be an additional wait for the chicharron. So I decided I'd just go ahead and get the cabeza. Um, I am planning to cook these up for dinner with a little bit of egg, uh, but I'm gonna try it plain right now to see how they are. Mm. That was a ton of flavor. It is salty, it's fatty. I do taste a little bit of garlic and onion. That is really yummy. Let's try the garlic. And the garlic flavor is super strong. Um, it tastes like a really strong garlic bread. And then of course you get that hint of corn. Um, it was cool to see them grinding all the corn fresh and then making all these by hand. So really delicious. And I think we got both for just 70 pesos. So pretty affordable as well. This was our Airbnb for the past week in Via Hermosa. We had parking across the street. You can see David's loading the Jeep right now. Up these stairs. And a few more stairs. This was our apartment. So you come in the front door. You can see we had a nice little living room. Unfortunately, there wasn't a TV in here. Here we have a full bathroom. And then this is the room we used to charge things and store things. Had an AC unit, but it did not work. And this is the bedroom we slept in. You can see big king size bed, two nightstands, both with lamps. Closet space with a little area for me to do my makeup. There was the TV. Powerful AC unit in here. Full length mirror. And another full bathroom. Back out to the living room, you can see we had full dining room, cool little wine rack, and then a very large kitchen. Unfortunately, that light up there did not work, so it was pretty dark if I tried to cook at night, but overall, we definitely liked the place. That comfortable Airbnb set us back $616. We spent $97 on transportation, $77 on entertainment, just $58 on bars and alcohol, $497 at restaurants, and only $62 on groceries. I didn't cook very much. That grand total, $1,407, or $201 per day. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already, check out last week's video where we take some day trips from Villa Hermosa to Comalcalco and the Pueblo Magico of Tapihulapa.